Hello, this is a sketchbook tour, as you can probably tell. My name's Kristen, and I just finished this sketchbook last night. It is the Art Creations by Talons sketchbooks. Uh, they go by Royal Talons in the UK. But yeah, this was a nice little sketchbook. I am just gonna get started, I guess. Um, it has this little owl sticker on the front. The white cover has gotten quite nasty. I would not probably get a white one again. <laughs> yeah, in the front I just put my name and my email and stuff in case, ooh, let's write what date we finished it. It was, so I had this sketchbook from February to December and I worked in a couple different books throughout this time period, so this isn't entirely chronological, and there was months where I didn't touch this at all. This was sort of my ugly sketchbook. It's like the cheapest um, sketchbook that I have, so that's what I used it for. And right here in the front of my sketchbook, I usually just write like ideas and things that I'm into at the time. So it says fish, cats, imaginary foliage, horses, rabbits, which I did draw some of those things. This front page, I did a bunch of swatching on the left side there, and I wrote in perfect symmetry, which is something that I was really into at the time and still am into. Yeah, this is just some Tombow brush pens and color pencils, just playing with color palettes and doing some loose doodles to get started. This is the same materials, Tombow brush pens and a limited selection of colored pencils. This is a tarot card I kept pulling, so I drew my interpretation of that here. And at this time, I was saving a lot of images of little kids on Pinterest because I was really inspired by like children's clothing brands. And yeah, so that's what this is from. We got some patch ideas here, and I really like how I wrote the date in this little postage stamp. A good luck rabbit because he's missing a paw. This guy freaking loves bugs. Um, I was having a bug phase last February. These are some drawings kind of from Pinterest. I didn't end up posting this on my Instagram because this idea was sort of copied. Um, the exact like line by line image wasn't copied, but it's like a body with some sort of symbolic imagery in key places. I was really getting into tarot at this time and thinking about symbols and how you can work with symbols as an illustrator. We watched the Beatles thing, the Get Back series on Netflix. And if you have seen it, it's a bit slow. So I drew the Beatles and also the police officer who I really like the way that he looks. He's like a little more stylized. I took some notes over here. I was getting into researching folk art at this time. So um, just some notes about that on the right side. Um, around this time I was starting the 100 day project. I didn't end up finishing it. I think I did like 15 or 20 days in a row and just decided that it wasn't like for me this time. Um, I'm gonna make a video about that because I have completed it in the past and it was really beneficial for me, but it just wasn't beneficial for me to make something postable every single day and then go through all the process of posting it. And yeah, I'll talk about that, I guess in a different video, but this is me drawing the view from inside my mom's car, driving back from skiing. I was so carsick doing this, <laughs> but I had to do it because it was for the 100 day project, so. This is a visual representation of a Mary Oliver poem. I was reading a lot of her poetry at the time and it says, over and over in the butterfly, we see the idea of transcendence. In the forest, we see not the inert, but the aspiring. And in water that departs forever and forever returns, we experience eternity. Her poems just have a lot of nature imagery and just really strong imagery so I feel like they lend themselves really well to being illustrated and I wanted to kind of try that in here. This is the interior of a cabin. Um, we were in Gardner, Montana which is near Yellowstone in the winter and we we're playing board games and 
hanging out with friends and I did this in Tombow brush pens. This is another interior view of the cabin. I really wish I didn't do the curtains that green color. These are some cats in graphite, which I don't usually work in graphite and you can tell I think that I feel a little uncomfortable using it. This is just like a nothing page. Um, Aw, tits. I think that was like a sticker idea that I was gonna draw like a little tit. These are some cars that I drew. Um, they are done with uh, Tombow brush pens and unfortunately one of them smeared pretty bad but I got a, pi a picture of it before that happened so I really like this page. I don't usually draw cars or things like this but um, I managed to make them look cute and in my style I guess. These are some oil pastel swatches from a time that I was trying out my oil pastels and a line drawing of a flower from my parents' garden. I think this is the same day. This is like my parents' backyard. They have this interesting looking trailer. I guess I was into drawing cars around this time. This is from a Still Here Still Life. It says it's week 78, just like a big vase of flowers and I wanted to do like a pen line drawing. So this is right around the time that my partner and I moved to Salt Lake City, uh, which is where we currently live. Um, we went to a park near our house. We rode our bikes to the park and there was a lowrider car show there that day. And so I brought my sketchbook just because I didn't know what we were gonna end up doing and sat there and drew more cars. Um, this was my 28th birthday. I drew like a little self-portrait of myself. I ended up painting an actual like painted version of this in a sketchbook, a different sketchbook. Um, and then on this side, it's a list of ideas for a zine that I wanted to make. And it's just like things that I like and things that I don't like. And you can pause to read it if you so desire. Just kind of like a nothing page, just watching things and writing notes to myself. This is a drawing of a house that I did while I was waiting for my oil to be changed. My partner and I took a trip to Minnesota to visit his family and we stayed at this hotel in Duluth where you can see out onto the lake and I did this little watercolor and just like a pen drawing of a bread bowl. This is from that hotel. I just wanted to draw this beer label that they had hanging on the wall. Um, I just liked that it said pure and without drugs or poison. And this is an owl done in my favorite Prismacolor colored pencil, which is the 90% warm gray, which is like a really nice, not black, dark color. And then the red is a poster pen, which this, um, I didn't really talk about the sketchbook much, but. The um, Art Talents paper is really thick, and this is water or a uh, wash, and like markers and stuff work really well in these books, and they're like $10, so it's a cheap book with high quality paper, but not too high quality. So. And then another owl, similar to the one on the other page, and you can kind of see that I was experimenting with my mark making and added a little bit of white because the paper is a cream color. This is a block print. If you have ordered a sticker or like art from me in the last year, you have probably received this block print on a piece of paper as a thank you card. Um, and yeah, this is one of the first block prints that I did. I really like it, it's a little coil. So this is during a time when I was just really into drawing with pure black pen and experimenting with shape and just doing a lot of observational drawing. Obviously this fish is not from observation, but the scissors and some of the stuff from my desk is. And yeah, I was seeing a lot of cowboy imagery in my life. Another pure pen page. I really like this page. This is a business card from my friend Little Canyon Press. I just like the simplicity of this block printed business card. And I was looking at a lot of Austrian and 
Swedish textiles at the time. So this is from a 20th century Austrian quilt, I guess. And a praying mantis. For some reason, I couldn't think of what those are called. This is a piece of black construction paper. I bought a pack of construction paper at the art supply store because I was just like, maybe I can use this for something. And I tried to do like a gouache test on here, but I don't think that the construction paper is like high quality enough to withstand paint, but this was a fun little experiment. So I didn't really have anywhere to put it or anything to do with it. So I just put it in here. I got these Caran d'Ache Neo Colors on a trip and I didn't really know what I was gonna use them for. I just was really attracted to the packaging and I just liked the way that they looked. So um, this is me testing them out. If you have seen my rainbow trout earrings, this is like a little doodle of one. And I discovered Katie Ben, who is an artist and an illustrator and she uses these like crayon style yeah, I really like her work. Some rams and I guess lettering practice. I wrote some notes on the bottom. This is all the way in July at this point. And this is my attempt at recreating these Hungarian book plates. My Pinterest is full of ex libris designs. They are usually block prints and I was just feeling really inspired by them at the time and I would recommend like if you're really inspired by something just like copy it into your sketchbook. You don't have to do anything with it but it will help you understand it more and incorporate some of the like shape language into your style and your vocabulary. And then some more like little kids, their clothes. I just love like the shape of these kind of like androgynous like little overall outfits some bugs and a lupine. I wrote, one time an art instructor told me to pretend that I was a tiny bug crawling on my subject and that is how I drew this flower. I think it is a lupine. And yeah, I like this page. It's fun to me. I think it was really fun to make. A quail and some blueberries in a chunky Posca pen. And then this, another doodle page with some, I guess these are, lilies maybe no I don't know what kind of flower these are but this was fun I um, don't usually work with such a thin tool so it was fun to explore shape with that and then a horse this is from mid-july I was also really into like tattoo imagery at the time so you'll see a lot of that kind of make its way into the like doodles that I incorporate this is a cowgirl and these are some designer toys that I was seeing. So none of these are my original ideas, just I really like the stick guy. <laughs> and then I did just a little rainbow gradient, taped it off with drafting tape, just as a fun little addition. So this might feel like a big departure from the like pen doodles that I was doing before, but I got really sick this summer I had COVID and I was in the hospital for a week and after I got home I just was like I don't know what I'm do like what I'm making what like art means to me anymore I was like not having a crisis but just feeling like really sick still and really weird and so I just wanted to put a bunch of color down and scribble and so that's what this is and then on the other page too this one is a little more intelligible and less angry than the other page but as you can see this is like gouache uh oil pastels like all the mediums and the paper is handling it fine and not buckling or anything these are some sketches for a sticker that i made i can insert it here it just says granola girl and yeah i'm a granola girl so i made that sticker i really like the little doodles. It's fun to see the progression because I now know what the end product looks like. So it's fun to see that. And then this is just like a still life drawing from some flowers that I got. Some cars that didn't end up looking like I wanted them to. And then like a little flower thing in the middle. This is not a very successful page in my opinion. 
some really simple doodles with one of those three color magic pencils. And then I got a new tattoo around this time. It's, if you've ever seen Helma F. Clint's uh, Swan series, I can probably pick it up. It looks like this. Yeah, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, but yeah, that's what it looks like. It's like a dark swan and a light swan. So that is in a chunky Posca pen. Another chunky Posca pen doodle page. This is Nora, my cat. Her paws are so fluffy and she's the love of my life. So yeah, so this is just fan art of my cat. Uh, this is from Avian August. I didn't like participate in Avian August necessarily. I just did some of it when I felt like it. I was working on another project at the time, so. Yeah, I didn't have a ton of time to dedicate to that, but I did do a couple of the drawings just like as a prompt. So this is a goldfinch and a ruddy quail dove. More avian August. Yeah, this isn't my usual like style of illustrating. I don't like usually go for a big thunk, a big chunky, like thick line and then like scribbly colored pencil, but I was just like making it like a coloring book for myself, which is how I got it done. And then these are some penguins. I think they're really cute. They were fun to draw. I really like this one and that one. <laughs> this is just kind of a swatching page. I'm occasionally I'll just like arrive on a page and then I'll be like, okay, this is just like a thumbnailing and swatching page. So I'll turn back to this page and just add random things to it. So this has been added to several times. This is a thumbnail for a larger painting that I can insert here. Some Prismacolor colored pencil experimentation. And then this actually kind of changed my life. I watched this video about, you know, about ADHD like productivity and I am not diagnosed with ADHD, but I suspect that I have it. And um, this guy was just saying that if you captivate your own attention, create anticipation, compete with yourself and complete projects by setting deadlines. Um, that's like a way to motivate yourself or, you know, think about how to get yourself to do things. So yeah, I, I always think about completing things because if I can complete something like in one sitting, it gives me like a rush. <laughs> so I love, I love completing things. I love completing this sketchbook. And even though it was like a long project, so setting deadlines is really helpful for me. And yeah, I can talk about that in an, in another video if you guys are interested. This is an azure tit and a roseate spoonbill from Avian August. Pigeon and a wood duck and an amoeba apparently. Around this time, which I think is like late August, I did a, I was part of a group gallery show um, called Embodied Ecologies and it was surrounding the concept of disability and like relationship to the environment. And I did a couple pieces that were really inspired by scientific illustration. So I was researching scientific illustration at the time and like borrowing motifs and just like shapes. So this is an exploration for that project. And yeah, I went to the library and did some research and these are some notes. I really like these little hands that they have in like 18th century illustration that like they, I don't know if they didn't invent arrows or like they didn't have arrows, but in everything, like there's little hands, like fancy little hands pointing to stuff. And yeah, I just wrote some notes, how images get distorted with imagination and repetition. And early botanical illustrations depict like species that have not survived or don't exist anymore due to genetic mutation, which I think is really interesting. This is obviously a very scientific illustration inspired page with some shells and birds and some textiles in here. Um, I got a new red gel pen at this time and wanted to try it out. I like how the red brings out the creamy like warmth of the pages. This is some more Avian August. I think I was getting kind of burnt out on this. I, I draw birds a lot or like I... I don't know, I feel kind of pressured to draw birds almost because people love it when I draw birds. So yeah, I like birds, I love them, but I was getting kind of tired of it. This is like 15 days so far. 
Um, I was at the library again waiting for my partner while he was doing some studying and I checked out a book about typefaces and visual styles and so I was just copying some of the like engravings and like uh, I don't know what to call them I want to say accessories but they're like embellishments and I love this little jester um, I wrote I love the simple lines and smart shapes of these uh, engravings and woodblock prints. It's a hard style to replicate in pen because so much of the style is dictated by the medium, which is true. I love this little butt. It's cute. A snowcap hummingbird page for Avian August. I really like this little hummingbird down here. Um, yeah, these were fun drawing exercises. I wasn't really using them as anything else, just kind of to get myself warmed up and get myself to draw something. Um, a red, I think this is a red capped crane. I was gonna draw several of them on this page, but then I kind of stopped. And this is some thumbnailing for a larger painting and some swatching of some Muji pens. More scientific illustration vibes, um, the little hands you can see, I've incorporated them in a way that feels like my style. And then these are some seed pods I really like this page. This might be my favorite page in the sketchbook, but um, it's like some weeds and some ideation for that Embodied Ecologies project. Um, more like scientific illustration imagery. And I really like the layered look with this little background piece. This is, um, I had an infection and I was in the hospital. So this is like a bunch of weeds from my window. And I think you can kind of tell that I wasn't feeling well when I drew these horses and some of this other stuff. But yeah, forcing myself to draw even when I didn't really feel like it. This is kind of where I feel like the style changes a little bit in this sketchbook. Um, whenever I paint with gouache, I try to clean off all the paint on my palette by dumping it into a sketchbook before I like rinse it off into the sink. So that's what this is, just like some gouache underneath and then Posca pen doodles on top. I did the same thing here with um, a bunch of gouache and watercolor and then this is Posca pen and this is the pinkest Posca pen and then on top is colored pencils. So that's like really layered and paper is still holding on. This is like one of my favorite ones that I did in the watercolor and Posca pen. I don't love this side, but these little frog guys are pretty cute. More of that, covering up some gouache that I dumped in the book, which, yeah, I would recommend doing that if you have leftover paint, because it can kind of reduce the fear of ruining a blank page. So these are just some like funky flowers. This is a spread that I did while I was camping with my partner in Maple Canyon in Utah. And I just drew some stuff that we were, had around us and then um, my partner while he was reading because he holds so still while he's reading, which is really nice. This was done with a Pentel pocket brush and so was this page. Um, it's like this really thick, juicy pen and like it's actually a brush filled with ink. So it gets, it gives you that like really interesting line quality that I really like, so. And this is inspired by Anne Chang, who goes by Shishan Yu on Instagram, and they are actually a tattoo artist. So I was just copying some of their flash designs. I think it's okay to copy other artists if it's just in your sketchbook and you're not sharing it as if it's your own or like trying to profit off of it. I just was trying to study the way that they um, did their shapes and the boot is from me and so is this little head. And then this is right around the time that Midnight's came out. Um, so that's what that is. I really like the nice, um, like nice. <laughs> and I think that would be a cute sticker. These are some cupies. I was becoming very obsessed with cupies. Same sort of thing. I wanted to draw them. These are some colored pencil doodles. I was seeing a lot of images of people holding birds. So that's what this is. I really like the way that this bird looks. And yeah, I was really um, falling back in love with my colored pencils around this time. This is another guy 
holding birds, like a sort of like pigeon feeder person. And I really like drawing old people. I think their features are super interesting. And then these are just some blobs, some colored pencil blobs. Sometimes you just gotta scribble. This is um, thumbnailing and trying to design another thank you card. So this is like my sketch and just like some ideas. And then I ended up just straight block printing this into my sketchbook. So these are some cupies and I've copied most of them, but some of these are from my own kind of imagination after learning like how they are constructed. Um, and this isn't like to do anything with these, just to kind of learn, figure out the like, how they're made, how they're drawn. And then this is another colored pencil and Posca pen thing on top of some paint. I really like how this flower looks. I'm not a huge fan of the hand. I feel like it's not, it's just like muddy and hard to read. Um, doing some red pen doodles. This is a Northern Flicker. I saw one at the Red Butte Botanical Gardens, so I drew one. Around the time that these figure drawings were done, I had just taken my very first live figure drawing class and I wanted to do some drawing at home, but I think in the future, if I ever do more figure drawing, I will use a larger pad of paper because the figures get kind of lost. And so I did two separate ones, this lady is in blue and then the guy is in that Prismacolor warm gray. This is kind of a nothing page. I was trying to draw something while we're on vacation in Mexico. This is like the pool, but I just was not feeling it. And so I just stopped, which I think is fine. And then this is another figure drawing practice. It's kind of hard to see, but they were there. So this is in Mexico. We were in Cabo for Thanksgiving and this little scene is done in, um, charcoal that I found just like in the sand from someone having a beach campfire and it has sort of rubbed off by now but it was fun to do. And then some more figure drawing and I like how I outlined them in this teal Posca pen. This is some thumbnailing for a gig poster that I did for my friend. Um, I was really inspired by this little postcard that I have that has this girl riding a horse and she's like lassoing a heart. So I wanted to incorporate that. And then this is kind of um, copied from Carson Ellis who made this awesome gig poster for Sleater Kenny. And I just was trying to figure out her, like the way that she constructs her shapes and like her shape language and wanted to kind of emulate and that, that in my work. So. Instead of looking at her piece while I like worked on my piece, I just sketched this like loose drawing and then kind of had a better understanding of how she laid out the piece. And then this is more thumbnailing for the piece. This is kind of the direction that I ended up going in. I really like this initial sketch. I don't love what's going on over here, but I can put that image in here as well. This is some more figure drawing, it's hard to see, but it's like a guy holding a ball and then I did like a little doodle version of him over here. Kind of reminds me of like Keith Haring with these little lines. And then these are some deer, just like trying to exaggerate the shapes as much as possible and taking inspiration from folk art. I really like this little sun too. This is like full on my folk art phase these last couple pages, so. I really like the idea of just drawing like these wacky birds that are not like based in reality. They're not like based on a specific bird. They're just kind of like a bird. And yeah, I just love folk art. I love the like flatness of it. I love the shape language and I, um, I like the weird symmetry and just kind of like spookiness of it. So that's what these are. And this is um, a beige Posca pen. It's like my favorite Posca, Posca pen. Oh, this is actually the white one, but. I really like the beige Posca pen and really into this like poppy red Prismacolor pencil. It's like a really bright, almost orange red. This is a little girl with a bird and a flower, more like folk art inspired. I really wanna draw more characters in my next sketchbook or like people, but simplify them in a way that makes sense for my style. 
These are some birds and some little lambs. I really like this page. Um, this is a gray Posca pen. This is the beige one. I really like just using that beige Posca pen because it helps you to find just the general shape of the thing. And then I go in and like add some details. But this is really different. This is December 7th, so like a couple weeks ago. Really different from like the pen stuff that I was working on earlier, but I feel like it still fits in my style. So it's fun to like flip through the sketchbook and be like, oh, this is the same thing, but a little bit different. This is a bunch of oil pastel doodles. I really love this like scribbly style and like when I'm feeling like I don't know what to draw, I always just draw my cat. So this is Nora and a little cat and I have this little sheet, which is just to protect the pages from smushing together, which they inevitably do, and that's fine. But this is a little skier going through the aspens. I don't love it. And then this is actually my last page, I think. Yeah. So I started a club in my town. Um, it's called the Salt Lake Sketchbook Society, and we met and I just wanted to, to work on something simple but like that I could scribble and like talk to people while I was doing. So I worked on this. I actually really like the colors and it feels very Utah to me. So yeah, that's what that is. It's Posca pen and Tombow brush pen and colored pencil. This is like that weird awkward page that's like sort of half glued together and I'm just not gonna use it. And then in the back of the book I have some swatches, some random stickers, um, and my driver's license, I guess. So yeah, that is the whole book. It's like quite brimming. I don't know if I'm gonna use another one of these. I wanted to show that it's kind of a weird size. So this is like the A5 Midori notebook and it's just a couple, like an inch and a inch, like an inch longer. So I wish that these were just like slightly bigger this way but yeah that was my sketchbook um it's like almost a year of drawings in there so i hope that you guys liked it and i just wanted to let you know that my patrons on patreon saw this first so they get um exclusive sketchbook scans every month um also a monthly podcast so that is over on my patreon and if you feel like checking it out and supporting me it's a big help and if you liked this video maybe you could like it and subscribe if you want to see more all right, thank you, bye.